Before we head over into my woodlot to uh, tap a few maple trees to get some sap, I'd like to talk briefly about tree identification. This book I picked up several years ago. It's a centennial book that the Maine Forest Service put out of trees in Maine. And I've always had a problem identifying some trees. Uh, you know, I've been a maniac all my life, so, you know, some trees such as maple, there's several different types of maple. There's Norway maple, red maple, rock maple, or sugar maple, and it's hard for me to identify one tree from another. So I, I picked up this book, which is a great guide to tree identification, and I... <clears throat> Turned, turned it to, <laughs> so I wanted to just uh, say that this is a great book. If you want to identify a lot of main trees, this is a great book to, a uh, reference book to go to. But as far as maple trees go, uh, how to identify these different types of maple? And I've found that the red maple which uh, you can see here, the leaf uh, has kind of jagged edges on it, going around has kind of a jagged edge. Whereas the sugar maple, a rock maple, the edges are more smooth. Looks very similar in shape, but uh, <clears throat> the only difference is the, the edge, edges of it. To look at the back of a maple tree, for me, it's pretty doggone hard to identify a tree by the back. But uh, by the leaf, uh, you, can, you, can see the, you can see the difference. So <laughs> we're about ready to go over to my woodlot, set out a few buckets, see what we can get. Today, it, this morning, it was about 14 degrees. It's supposed to get up into the 30s, I believe, today. So this might not be a good run sap day. Usually, you know, to get up into the 40s would be a much better run. But anyway, we get, we're setting them out, and uh, tomorrow's supposed to be a real good warm day and a cold night, which is what you need. We should get a pretty good sap run tomorrow. So we'll head over, head over to the woodlot now. Headed over to my woodlot. Uh, you can hear the rattling in the back probably of the buckets and the covers and and so forth. Uh, and I gotta tell you, I'm a real novice at the sap collecting. Uh, I only started it like three years ago. Uh, and, you know, when I was a kid, my mother used to tap the maple trees which were on the front lawn. And uh, she would boil it down in the house. And one time, she was multitasking, as, as she often did, trying to get three or four things going at one time and, and uh, left the sap on the wood stove and it got down to the stage where it was ready to turn into syrup, but it boiled a little too hard and she was went out to check it and the, the sap was, the uh, sugar was dripping from the ceiling. We had a metal ceiling in the kitchen at that time. <laughs> the sap was, it overcooked and was, was uh, the steam was full of syrup and uh, it, was a, it was a sticky mess she had to clean up. So, so much for multitasking. Uh, but my woodlot, I have a woodlot which used to be my parents. Uh, of 125 acres and it's a mixed growth a lot of pine a lot of different types of trees on it uh, but this this one particular area which I have started to cut out the underbrush and, and uh, cut out the green growth and just let the hardwood come which is mostly maple and and uh, it is mostly red maple. Uh, and I find that red maple doesn't seem to produce as much 
sap is, is the uh, rock maple that sugar maple does. But, uh, <clears throat> but it does produce sap and it does boil down and make some nice maple syrup. So we're, we were about a mile away from the woodlot and uh, we'll soon be there. Yeah, here we are at the woodlot, headed in the woods road. As you can see, this is mainly pine here with a lot of young, young uh, growth coming up in between it. Uh, I have a, a guy come in every so often to do some selective cutting, and uh, which has worked out well for for uh, keeping the lot active and and uh, you know generating a little little money to pay the taxes and so forth and uh, keep it cleaned up. This area on the left hand side here is the area which I have been started, uh, I guess it's about three years ago, I started to try to thin it out and, and uh, <clears throat> keep the nice maples, the young maples coming. Uh, as you can see there's a lot of young growth here, some that of, you know, maybe anywhere from four to six inches in diameter, which is uh, too small to to tap, really. Uh, they, I think they recommend a tree which is at least eight, eight to ten inches in diameter uh, would be eligible for tapping. And you, as you can see, I put out some buckets the other day and have collected some sap here uh, yesterday. Uh, so you can see I still have a lot of work to do down through there. I really want to thin it out and get, get rid of the uh, green growth out of there so it lets more light in for the maples. And, and uh, mainly this lot has just red maples. Uh, I, very few, if any, uh, sugar maples are in this area. but. It does, as I say, it does produce, and so uh, you know, it's kind of a fun thing to do, and keeps me active, and and uh, so that's why I do it, and I love maple syrup. So we're gonna park up here. I have a sawmill here, which uh, produces some some stuff for us to build with or whatever, and. Uh, Right now in the winter we don't do much sawing. But we're gonna we're gonna tap down through this area here on the left hand side. Which I've cleaned out to some degree and uh, boy, a lot of rattling going on here. And we'll go to work tapping. We got different, they got all kinds of taps out now. These are some of the old taps uh, that they use. Uh, you drill a hole into the tree, which we have a, a drill here, which is made for, for this. Uh, and this, this tap is like a 7 16 tap. They have 3 8 taps. They also have plastic taps and tubes. Uh, which you can use, you know, on big operations, you can string lines, plastic lines through the woods and uh, collect it that way. You don't have buckets, you have, you know, a central place for the sap to run and, and collect it at one, one spot. But this is just a, a rinky-dink operation here and, and we're putting out the buckets and, and just having a good timing. So these are the covers which uh, will go on top of the buckets to keep rain and snow out uh, which work really well. These are galvanized buckets uh, and they also have, I have some aluminum buckets. So, Alright, we'll just gather up our stuff and head in.
I have, what they would kind of recommend, as I understand it, is uh, each year when you tap, you try to find the hole that you tapped last year. And, you know, you can see that I tapped this tree right here last year. And they recommend that you go at least, at least, a, a six inches lower or six inches higher and keep at least a six inch spread away from that hole. And you do that each year. So, last year I tried to, I was always thinking that the south side of the tree would be the best side because the sun hits it and you'd get the most production of sap. But I'm not so sure that's that's always true. This drill, you drill a hole about an inch and a half deep, and and that that type of drill, which made special for that, is uh, cleans all the chips out of the hole. Well, I'm going to put. The, the tap in the hole and I got this little hammer I drive it in as far as I can drive it then we set the bucket on it just like that and we'll be putting a cover on top of it Sometimes the uh, sap instantly starts to come, but I haven't, you know, it's just too cold this morning. Pretty, pretty easy. This is the easy part of the operation. When you got to haul around a bucket and uh, collect from each tree, that gets a little more labor intensive. We had a wind last night, blew that cover off. But this is uh, where I grew up, in my parents' house, and these trees here, this tree and that tree, my mother planted. Uh, it doesn't seem like that many years ago. That big maple there and this big maple and the one over there were here when I was a kid. And there used to be Two more up here and one more down here. Used to be like six trees here. And uh, they're gone. But these are rock maple here. Sugar maples. And I don't know if it's warm enough for the sap to be running. But you can see a little bit frozen in the bottom of that. But it seems like the rock maple, the sugar maple, the sugar content of those trees seem to be higher than the red maple. Uh, we checked them the other day when I took them over to a Wayne's who, who uh, does the evaporating of my sap. I don't have a facility to do it. He does. He has a sap house and he taps himself. So I take all my stuff over to him and we work out a deal on, you know, he keeps half of what it produces and, and I get the other half, which is a good deal for me because boiling down is 
really time consuming. Uh, and you have to be right on top of it all the time. We checked uh, my buckets with the sugar maple and it was like 3% sugar with a hydrometer and we checked some in of the sap that I got from the red maple and it was just under 2%. So there was a, there was a difference that way. So I think probably because of the sugar maple, you know, the content of sugar is much higher. So I guess we can't see it dripping right now, but you know, it is cold here and, and uh, I bet tomorrow it'll be running good. So we'll check, check again tomorrow. Well, about all I'm gonna do today, I may put out a few uh, of the plastic taps and, and lines this afternoon. I got a few more trees that I could uh, tap over in the wood lot. But uh, I guess that about does it for the day, and uh, stay tuned. We may have another episode. Take care.